Welcome to Mind and Heart. I'm Sister John Dominic, a foundress of the Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist. It has been my joy to have been involved in Catholic education for over 30 years. One of my privileges for the community has been to create Lumen Ecclesiae Press, a publishing organization that develops educational resources used now by over 500 schools around the United States and the world. Lumen Ecclesiae is our call to magnanimity, our call to be large soul, to do something greater for the church. So today, I invite anyone interested in becoming a saint to join with us as we unpack the deep beauty, mystery, and certainties of our faith to transform our lives so that we can know, love, and serve God with our mind and heart. Welcome to this episode of Mind and Heart. And today my guest is Sister Elizabeth Ann. Um, I'm very happy to have you with me, Sister. And it's great to be here. I know. And we're going to begin um, actually talking about Echoing the Mystery. Um, but before we really dive into the book and have a conversation about that, first of all, I'd like for you to have the listeners tell us about yourself, maybe when you entered and a little bit maybe your teaching experience or what you've been doing so they can kind of get to know you, sure. something about you. Yes, sure. yes, yes. So I've been part of the community since 2000 the, as part of the Jubilee group. And you and guys are still celebrating. <laughs> we are still celebrating that. <laughs> and uh, let's see, and uh, since I entered, you know, I've had a variety of experiences, you know, first that initial formation, um, and then because my degree wasn't in education, going back and getting an education degree. <clears throat> and then um, having opportunities working in our mission advancement office. And, I, and then just for the last four years teaching first at St. Ignatius College Prep in Chicago. And then now at Father Gabriel Richard here in Ann Arbor. Yeah, which you you love teaching, right? I love teaching. Yeah, I know. So that <laughs> it tells you just kind of have this glow about you, you know, when you're you're doing it. I mean, it's um, which is really wonderful. I mean, especially high school students, you know. Yes, um, great. And, and, and I think what really what I'd love to talk about, you know, we've spent some time talking about um, – you know, Barbara Morgan and, um, and just kind of her, her experience, you know, if anyone um, has a, a copy of Echoing the Mystery, if you read in the introduction or the preface about it, we kind of give a history of her, you know, like 70 years of being involved in, in catechesis. And uh, I just would love to know, I mean, you were, you were her, her graduate assistant, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. And really, and what was it like? I mean, um, those are her first years that were there. And, just maybe personally how the experience and what you learned from that. I mean, you can take as long as you need to, to share that, but I think a lot of people um, may have been former students to me who may be listening to this that could share their own things, but just anyone who's new, new to Echoing the Mystery, but just to understand the person and who she is really yes. lets us understand why we have such a, a beautiful work to offer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So meeting Barbara Morgan, I would say is one of the formative experiences of my life. Yeah. Um, because even though I was raised Catholic, went to Catholic school, I had already been at Steubenville for a couple of years. When I met her, I think I met the first, um, just real living example of what Christian womanhood was. Oh, that's beautiful. The, because she, um, I'd never seen people, she and Gary, her husband, I had never seen people who took their faith so seriously. Yes. And uh, even though, you know, even I've met wonderful Catholics, but but they just really stood out. Um, I remember one thing that really struck me was going to her home for her the first time, knowing that Gary had had a successful career um, for several years, that, that they had chosen to come to Steubenville because they felt a calling from God and that this was a chance for Barbara to, to give her gifts um, to help build up the church and help in this work. And, um, and seeing the way they embraced that, like they wanted God's will, you know, as yeah. a couple um, for right. their lives. And they just wanted to serve the church. And, but then going to their home, seeing like, even though Gary had been so successful, like they had moved, they had such a simple home in oh, Steubenville, like right. just That's the beautiful. simplicity which with they lived and um, was just such a witness to me. Like, yes, your faith is supposed to have an impact on every detail, you know, of your life. Right. And seeing the way they opened their home to their students, um, to other family members, uh, and so just the, the gift of hospitality that they showed um, was truly beautiful. Seeing Barbara, she was a woman of prayer and uh, took that so seriously. And, um, you know, it, everything, it was just all just a wonderful example to me. Yeah, I can, I remember, I mean, she was very, um, probably still is a little bit protective of you, you know, um, <laughs> at that time, because we uh, actually, when I had her in class, and you actually, you were a student there when I was, yes. when I was studying. Um, but when I had her in class, uh, 
I think it may have been the first year she had taught. Maybe it was like 1995 or something. Yes. Yeah. And um, uh, the scripture, Heart of Catechesis mm -hmm. that she taught. And at that time, um, we really, I had not, we had not started the, the community, the Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist. I was still a member of the, uh, the National Dominicans at mm -hmm. that time. And, uh, and so when I um, kind of came back and, and saw her again and, she was like, and it was, we were, we were a new community yes. and, um, you had at that time you were really discerning and, and feeling like this God was calling you to be a part of this. She called me and she was, um, she goes, I'm going to ask, I'm going to be very bold. You know, um, <laughs> she goes, do you realize what you're getting? And I'm like, well, yes. And she goes, you know, she's very, uh, sister Elizabeth, you know, at that time, we, at that time it was your, your given name. Um, it's very special to me. And I need to, I want to make sure that this is a sound place where she's going. And I was like, <laughs> let me assure you. I said, you know, Cardinal O'Connor started, you know, started us, you know, mother something. We have a lot of experience, you know, and she said, okay, you know, so I'm, and, and then now years later, um, she'll see me and she's like, I'm so embarrassed that I called and asked, asked you that, you know, I, I see that this was really a work of the Lord. She goes, but do you understand why I was protective? And I said, yes, you know, so, um, but I guess my, my, the one thing too, as being, um, you know, cause when you're at the beginning of something and maybe yes. that's why, um, you know, you've been able to be such a wonderful sister in our community, you know, because we're, you may not realize it, but you're kind of part of trailblazing. I mean, mm -hmm. even when you're working with Barbara as, uh, as an uh, assistant, you were trailblazing because she was starting the program, yes. you know, yeah. yes. and, yeah. uh, how, what was it like to be in that yes. role as, as, as something as new as starting up? It, yeah, you know? it was so exciting. And I can tell you, um, it was so providential. So I was at my undergrad degree was in the early 90s. So I, had, I graduated in 95 and then went back to do a graduate degree at Steubenville. And it was right at the time that Barbara was coming. So um, I had experienced getting an undergraduate degree in theology at Steubenville. And I could really sense that the university needed something. The majority of their graduates were not getting degrees so that they could uh, then move on to a doctorate and, you know, yeah. publish works of theology or, you know, teach at a, at a university level. The, primarily they were getting theology degrees because they wanted to, to teach high school or they wanted to mm -hmm. work in parishes. And the students were not prepared for that. Yeah. You know, just the, um, so many times like students would, uh, they'd have all the knowledge of the faith, but they didn't know how to interact with people or they didn't know how to, um, um, you know, how to speak the truth in love or just really struggled to like, to not just do theology with kids, like to actually teach them the faith and move their hearts. And, um, you know, a lot of the students struggled because like they loved learning about the faith, but the people they were going to, you know, they didn't feel that automatic desire to know, right. about, you know, like trying to, to yes. win them over and help them to see the beauty of the faith. And so the students were struggling um, out in the field and Barbara knew exactly what they needed and she gave them exactly what they needed. So it was like the perfect, the perfect compliment to what Franciscan provided. She gave us the tools to, um, to be able to, to hand on the faith to others, which is what the majority of the graduates uh, wanted to do. Yeah. And I, and I can remember, um, you know, being in the class, I mean, she was almost like a, like a grandmother to everybody, yes. you know, I mean, <laughs> I think was. it's like, um, and she could really say things that most people couldn't get away with, yes. you know, yeah. um, and which was really actually, I found it very refreshing. Um, and, and what I'd say, you know, she, she talk about, you know, you need to be humble, you know, that, mm -hmm. And yes. I think that the thing that the point that um, she would really drive home um, is that when you're especially because because there is distinctions, there's distinctions with theology and catechesis mm -hmm. and exactly. what she was able to, to come in and, and to bring that. And and it's not that I mean, they 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 feed one another. I mean, it's, yes. and this is a really hard thing uh, to explain to people the difference mm -hmm. between the two, you mm -hmm. know, and. Because you may, in theology, where you're, you're studying God and you may understand everything and you're thinking about it, but um, you can't kind of do theology when you're doing catechesis, right. you know. Exactly. And um, maybe, maybe as we're talking, how would how would you explain? Those sure. two differences to yeah, people. Because I, I think it's was, an important yeah, point. That was a yeah, key that distinction that she made. Yes. You know, yes. She really, because she, she would basically tell us, like, you're not going to do theology in the parishes. You're handing on the faith. And she would explain it like this that theology dealt with, um, like, possibilities. You know, what are the possibilities of this reality of God? Or, um, 
possibilities like, you know, speculation about the implications of what God has revealed. And then catechesis is, okay, this is what we have to believe. You know, yeah. this is what we need in order to be in a close relationship with God and, um, and to be able to get to heaven uh, and to live the richest, fullest life on earth. Um, the, so it's, you know, catechetics is very much like, okay, this is what's been defined. You know, this is our faith. Um, this is what we profess in the creed. This is what we live, uh, you know, in the way that we, that we live our lives. Um, this is what everyone needs to know. Uh, the, and whereas theology, again, was more those possibilities, speculation. And so it's very, very important when you're teaching people um, in whatever context you're teaching them that um, basically you're not uh, putting too much of a burden on that. Like if you're, if you're dealing with speculations, it's like, well, do I have to believe that? Like, what, like you know, what if this doesn't make sense? Like in catechetics, it's much more clear. Like, okay, yeah, this is what you're you required do need to, believe. to believe. The, yeah, exactly. this is what it means um, to be Catholic. You embrace these truths. It's not unusual to need to understand what the word catechesis is and all the other words that are derived from that. Catechists, catechism. The word catechesis derives from uh, the Greek, which means to echo down. What the catechist is echoing down is what God has revealed to the world that needs to be taught, that needs to be passed down. And, and I think, um, so, so that, that distinction, I think, is, is really important. And I, and I saw that because I kind of came in, I was finishing when she was starting, you mm -hmm. know, and I could see that. Um, I could see the, the same need that you expressed, yes. you know, and because, you know, people were really hungry. I mean, they were looking for to hire people um, that really and were in love yes. with the faith. I mean, yes. you know, when you begin to study it and you're doing theology, I mean, you're like, why didn't, why didn't I know this? But yes. it's, you, you may have that experience, but it's another thing on how do you, you teach it? How yes. do you transmit it? And exactly. she would drive that down. I mean, she would drive that point, you know, the catechesis is that you're echoing down, you're transmitting the faith. Mm -hmm. um, you're handing this down, you know, this is God's revelation. Yes. You're just the, the instrument, the, yes. the witness to make that happen, yes. you know? Um, so, um, probably a lot of what we've been able to pull together, um, and echoing the mystery, mm -hmm. you know, analyzing doctrine. Um, yes. and I know that you spent a lot of time as a graduate assistant yes. traveling with her. Yes. Um, so what, what was she doing? I know bishops are asking her to, to come, you know, what, what were you doing when yes, you, yeah. when, so, so Barbara, again, she was always thinking about the formation of her students, you know, yeah. how can I give them experiences yeah. that will help them to succeed when they're out in the field? And, and so she took, while, um, while I was a grad assistant, she took on, um, roles as a consultant to two different dioceses and, um, and in two different areas. So for the Archdiocese of Washington, she was a consultant for our CIA and for the Diocese of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, she was a consultant for catechist training. Mm. And for three years, I went with her once a month to Sioux Falls and um, to help her. I was her assistant when she led this catechist training um, for that diocese. And the reason she went to Sioux Falls was a graduate of hers, Keith Borchers, whose daughter is also in our community, right. um, had, uh, he was the director of catechesis for the Diocese of Sioux Falls. And he basically spoke to, it was Bishop Carlson at the time, and um, he, he basically made a proposal to invite Barbara to come and to train the catechists. So it was a, you know, a Franciscan grad who was there, um, had been formed by Barbara, who basically wanted to bring that formation to all the catechists in his diocese. And, and didn't they use, um, like, they, I mean, they were like, even though they were like in Sioux Falls there, weren't they ahead on, on as far as technology? Oh, yeah. Where they streamed it. I <laughs> yeah, mean, now it kind of, we probably, it's, it's probably out of date now, but it was the Yeah, but I mean, at the yeah, time, at the it, time. Was, it was huge. You yeah, know? it was like a rural, a rural <laughs> telecommunications network. Yeah. Uh, where we went to this little <laughs> universe, like we drove like through cornfields to get to this <laughs> university and it was broadcast throughout. Yeah, it was, it was, um, so it that was, was, they were pretty much on the cutting edge on the cutting at the time, edge, yeah. you know? And yeah. so even though you think about well, what was going on in Sioux Falls, well, they were pretty much on the... the they were. Um, uh, so that, you know, with that experience, and, and did you at any time, I mean, you're, you're, you're probably, again, if you're kind of trailblazing and she's kind of beginning these initiatives, mm -hmm. did you ever pause and think, well, how, how are we going to 
get get all this stuff that she's teaching, get it together. Did, I mean, did you ever dream that we'd ever actually be able to pull it off and pull it together and in pull this one together? <laughs> the you know, I don't, I wasn't, I don't think I was thinking that far ahead. Yeah. Um, you're probably thinking about it. I got to make sure where we're going next. Right. Have everything that <laughs> right, we need. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I can tell you, like seeing the book now, like it's, um, it makes me think back to, so I was remembering, uh, so Barbara had a class called content in curriculum and, and basically she was doing the early version of, of echoing the mystery. So mm -hmm. she went through all the doctrines in that class, not well, like this close to 60 doctrines in that class, teaching us the, the keys of the deposit, the premise and the essentials. And I remember we had an oral exam for that class where she could pick any of those doctrines oh, and wow. you had to explain like the premise and the essentials. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I remember though, I, I remember being in that class and, um, and I remember what struck me, like when she taught us how to basically how to analyze doctrine, how to think about it so that our minds could wrap around it, how we could see how things um, fit together. What stood out was just the just the the beauty of the truth. Like you could yeah. see how, OK, what God has revealed is logical. It's coherent. The truths like flow one from another. Um, some truths are foundational. Others are based on them. Like this makes sense. Like what she is saying makes sense. I thought you might be interested to know some of the students that God sent to Franciscan University to study with me and that I had the great pleasure of teaching. Chris Stefanik, Edward Sri, Jeff Cavins, Bill Kymick, Ron Bolster, Eric Westby, Bob Rice, James Pauley, Scott Solom, Amy Roberts, Sister John Dominic, Sister Elizabeth Ann, Sean Dalton, Jim Beckman, Harold Brown, Tim Carpenter, William O'Leary, Carson Weber. And, um, and a lot of students who I think were, you know, maybe had natural gifts for teaching, they'd hear her explain this and they would think, you know, this is kind of how I teach anyway. Like, you know, any good teacher would see this, that like there's these, this premise, you know, on which um, the truth is based. And if you, if you, if you get that, then you'll easily be able to hand on, like, or grasp onto everything else. Like right. everything just flows right. from that. So you can see how it, like it stays together in your mind. Like this is how you can grasp onto this and see the implications of the doctrine. Um, so that was like, that whole class was like such a, it's changed the way that I thought about doctrine, and right. yet it was so natural because it's like this is what our minds are made for. Like yeah. this is this is so beautiful. And I, I think the, the one of the other beautiful things that um, I think she was able to hand on to people because if, mm -hmm. if we think about the students that she had, I mean, yes. there's a whole long list list yes. of them, you know. And what they're doing now is they're they're they've you know kind of found their role in the yes. in the church and some of them are more well known than others i mean mm -hmm. you know we may not know the the person that's in a diocese that's just kind of transformed all the parishes you know we're not we're not going to know these things mm -hmm. uh you know till eternity but i think is that oftentimes you know in in catechesis there was people that you know there was a sense where they're allergic to like the word doctrine oh know, yes and what it is yeah. and i think what she was able to do in the beauty of this approach which um you know we'll, we'll we can talk mm -hmm. more about is um the showing the beauty of the mysteries of the faith that you yes. you fall in love with this and yes. you, you see that this is god's revelation that, and that and maybe this is the charismatic approach you know that um you're bringing into relationship you know yes. when, when someone you know reveals you know, if, you know if you think about you know just like friendship i mean the way you get to know someone is you mm -hmm. have to tell something about the other person and know who yes. the other person is and you establish a friendship so that you yes. bring your brought into relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Not that you have to kind of know these things um, and your life has to be in conformity. You want your life to right. be in conformity. I right. mean, is that what you experienced as a student and the graduate and yes. witnessing this in the lives of, of, of other people? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So Barbara, she was always, always making the point that, um, the, the foundation for everything was the love that never ends, that the oh, whole yeah, purpose right. of God revealing himself was so that we could be in a relationship with him. So, um, so it was always um, in the context of that basic kerygma. So it's kind of like with the individual doctrines or the premise and all the essentials, but then the, there's the underlying premise you know, of all of it is the kerygma. Everything is based on that, the revelation of God's love. Yeah, everything is because of his love. 
And that showed um, what you saw, as you, as you said at the beginning, when we first started talking is that, I mean, knowing her, you know, and just seeing who she is as a woman yes. and the simplicity of her life. Yes. Um, that, that just kind of, it's just what you would expect. It was natural, but it yes. was a beautiful, it's a witness, you yes. know, a witness of a person who's had that encounter with Christ and, and, mm -hmm. and to know him. So uh, thank you, sister, so much. I mean, just this, uh, this hopefully our, our listeners can can see um, and and really be eager um, to to jump into to get echoing the mystery that we're able to provide, um, but just to see a little bit more personally the the person and, and Barbara uh, Morgan who uh, touched your life, you know deeply because you had a longer time. I mean myself um, as I she taught and I got to know her she, in mm -hmm. the years and and retirement that. Um, how really honored we are, our community yes. is, to be able to to have worked with her yes. and to make this um, her life's work, you know, available to, to mm -hmm. catechists and things that maybe um, in years to go we can help um, ha have a small part of, of changing the uh, the role of catechesis in, um, in the United States and maybe maybe the world. So, yes. sister, thank you so much for this conversation, um, and and I know that this is the first of other episodes and. Um, the next one, if you're willing, and, and if you are, we're going to really dive in and and to look at this more practically, because as, as you said, now you're a high school teacher, you're, yeah. you're chair of the theology department. And so I think now as you're actually using this in the field, um, more practically as far as theory, um, we're going to be able to hear how you do that um, in, in the next episodes. If you like this episode of the Mind and Heart Podcast, I invite you to click on the next available podcast and continue to enrich your mind, heart, and soul.